Hey guys, it's Grapherfer again, and by popular demand, here's every single P47 tested, graphed, and compared. Despite there being 15 different P47s in game, there are only 8 unique flight models, but I had to retest them, as well as their flap settings, altitude performance, and manual engine controls, so this did take a lot of time and effort to put together, as all of the Graph Thunders do. Huge thanks to Alpacinator who runs the War Thunder Aircraft Performance Calculator website to compare engine performance of different props. He helped me a lot behind the scenes by helping me understand how engines work and how they're implemented in-game. Before we get into the graphs, it's important to note that these planes are tested at 300 meters altitude where they all generally perform pretty poorly since the main point of the Thunderbolts is their high altitude engine power. So we will be getting into that later as well as the flap and manual engine control performance after going through each variant. First, let's go over the earlier models from the D-22 to the D-25. Here's the D-22 Razorback. The US, French, and Chinese D-23RA are all identical. One thing to note about the P-47s is that their top speed is rather slow on the deck, especially for an American plane. The British Premium Thunderbolt Mark I has a slightly different engine that performs exactly the same as the D-22 until you get to really high altitudes, but its performance overall is worse because its airframe is heavier. The German Razorback D-16 has the same R2800-63 engine designation as the D-22, but performs significantly worse at sea level and is similarly heavier like the Thunderbolt Mark I, so you'd expect it to perform worse, but I've gotten some strangely inconsistent results. On some test runs it performs abysmally, but on others it actually exceeds the top speed of the D-22 despite having worse engine power, more weight, and no differences between drag and the flight models. I thought it was going crazy, so I had to ask Alpacinator to double check it with me, and it turns out I'm not crazy, it does actually vary, and it turns out the automatic engine controller sometimes gets the prop pitch stuck in a weird setting where it's actually better for level flight speed, but sometimes it doesn't, and I never figured out what the trigger for it was or it got it to work consistently. I swear I tested this in other planes like five times each to try to figure out why they would perform differently, and I generally thought I had lost my mind, and maybe I have maybe able to get too many graphs and maybe any help, but I can't find out these. Anyways, the results for top speed are inconsistent, but for the most part it performs worse than the D-22 and the Thunderbolt Mark I. The D-25 as well as the no longer available German D model and the Soviet D-27 are basically the same as the D-22 but with extra weight, and this time with a minimum fuel load that's also higher making them even heavier. So basically this is the worst of all of the Thunderbolts, save for maybe the D-16 when the auto engine controls decide to be stinky. Why is it a 0.6 BR higher than the Razorbacks? I don't know, it seems like they can carry a few more rockets for ground pounding, but I don't think that's a reasonable argument for why it should be here. So basically you should just avoid these three, go play the Razorbacks or the later Thunderbolts. And here are the power graphs for the early Thunderbolts. And here's the power to weight. Now onto the later Thunderbolts. The D-28 and the D-30s are basically identical to each other, the D-30 does get an air break though and is at a higher BR. But these three planes are basically identical to the D-25 but now with 150 octane fuel so they get more power as long as they're not at super high altitude. It's a significant improvement, though it is still pretty slow on the deck especially for an American plane. The air brake on the D-30s are nice, but I don't think it's a good enough reason to play this plane over the D-28. Especially since at 5.0 you have a much higher chance of running into super props like the LF Mark IX or the Yak-3U. Also interestingly, the Chinese D-30s air brake does not seem to have an animation, which is kind of weird. You can see here that the game says that it's deployed and it is also creating quite a significant amount of drag, so it definitely is modeled into the flight model, but it just does not show up. At least as a visual animation. Now onto the N15 which gets clipped wings, more ammo, a lot more weight, a lot more fuel, and an engine that is more powerful above 2-3 to three kilometers altitude so it rolls better and has a higher rip speed, but also climbs quite worse. And the P-47M is basically the D-30, but lighter and with the same more powerful engine as the N-15, making it the best overall P-47 at all altitudes. Here are the power charts for all of the later Thunderbolts, and here's the power to weight. Now onto the altitude performance. The P-47s maintain engine performance very well up to high altitude. You'll still have worse absolute performance since the air is thinner so it's harder for you to turn, but the performance loss is much less than if you were playing something like a Yak-3. Despite the better high altitude performance of the P-47N's engine, it is still worse at 6km altitude than the D-28 or D-30, mostly thanks to just how heavy it is. But both of them are better than the Razorback D-22 and worse than the P-47M as expected. The flaps on the different variants perform basically the same with the exception of the N-15. The P-47D and M variants get quite a significant boost in turn circle with relatively minimal loss in rate making these flaps very good and so making them especially painful that they nerf them. 
You used to be able to deploy them up to rip speed, but now they completely auto-retract as soon as you go over 320 kph IAS, even on takeoff and combat flaps. I've heard this implementation is ahistorical, so hopefully they change these flaps so that they're more usable. The flaps on the N15 behave a little differently, the combat and takeoff seem to be effectively the same. The landing flaps are quite good, as it seems that they actually improve turn rate, but they rip at a lower speed of 300 kph. Interestingly, because the way the N15's flaps auto-retract is programmed the exact same way as the D and the M variants, you can actually get your landing flaps to rip if you go past 300 kph. Which kinda defeats the purpose of having an auto-retract feature at all. And lastly, let's take a quick look at how much extra performance you can get with manual engine controls. Personally, I don't really bother with it because the P47 is easy enough to cool down if it overheats, but you can actually improve your top speed and your climb rate a little bit if you use mech. I've been told by somebody who's more experienced with manual engine control that the best settings for the P47D variants are with 0% radiator, 80% mixture, and 85% prop pitch for general purposes. This by itself does improve top speed by a bit. Reducing prop pitch to 75% improves straight line speed by a smidge more, and increasing prop pitch to 100% will improve your climb rate also by a smidge. You can also manage overheating by reducing prop pitch and opening the radiator a bit, but I haven't tested it very much myself, so take the manual engine control results with a grain of salt. So that's it for today's Graph Thunder. Here's a chart that summarizes the main differences between each of the variants. Hopefully you found it helpful because this was genuinely frustrating to try and figure out what was wrong with my tests, especially with the German D16 as well as a lot of other issues that I ran into that I hadn't previously. Graph Thunder videos also just tend to be significantly more effort than the other videos, so if you like this stuff, please know that I'm trying to make them as much as I can, they just take a while to get right. Anyways, that's all for now, bye bye!